away that that film is an A, so anyone can go to see it. Last week we had a yep. clip from Tommy. It was a double A, and someone wrote in and said that uh, you had to be a cut. No, people under 14 couldn't go, so I should get mm. that right. It's very complicated. It's I all think, very I think complicated. anybody. Anyone can go and see it. We had to go to great lengths to make it an A, actually. We had to cut out yeah. three frames from uh, somebody's yeah. death in order to make it an A. Yeah. And yeah. We had well, to cut out two naughty words. Our viewers can go and see it. There's a much more exciting version around. We won't talk about that one. That, uh, how did you find making a film after working purely on television? Because the first film you made was almost a <laughs> compilation. Yeah. Wasn't it? Well, I think the funny thing is it, it, you lack the spontane spontaneity of having an audience right there. You know, I mean, with a TV show, it, it takes a long time to do the TV series. You know, a series of 13 is nine months to do it from writing to uh, filming and then recording in the studio. But with a film, like that film, we recorded it in, uh, well, we filmed it in five weeks. Yeah. And then that was last May, and it's been right up to now, we've been um, producing it, we've been editing it and putting the sound on it. It takes, you know, mm. by the end of that time, you're really fed up with it. You don't want to know anything well, about her, it, you know. Her screen, actual amount of screen time, I mean, the, the time spent on the film is absolutely incredible compared to television. I mean, mm. you know, the, the speed at which you can kind of produce the television half hours is rather nice actually because you just have the Saturday night you get there in the studio and you know that at the end of that evening, at the end of that piece of recording time, that is the show, that's finished. Whereas in the film it's never quite finished, you're always kind of feeling we can do this, that or the other or we can cut out yeah. this scene you or was, cut out this bit yeah, of dialogue. You've also got this strange thing when we're editing the TV show, you've got audience reaction on it so there's no question about you know what's funny and what isn't, you know, you can hear people laughing, you know, like that. And um, <laughs> being attacked eggs. by eggs. Being laid. <laughs> <laughs> laying eggs. It's got a message. Jack, eggs. I know it was oh, boring. I'm sorry. From, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> stay away from Newcastle, it says. Oh. Carry on. <laughs> are they edible? Yeah, they are edible. You know, on. doing the editing the TV shows, you're you're editing according to the audience reaction. But with a film, you know, you don't you, st you still don't really know what is working. You know, at the end of end of a year. <laughs> <laughs> Now, would you like to ask some questions from Cooper's school now? Do you think the last years have made much difference with the absence of John Cleese? Well, we were all a lot smaller, but um, in general, <laughs> the height average dropped. I think it did in a way, because, um, I mean, although we managed to... I mean, I think the series is quite good, I quite enjoyed it, but John represents a certain kind of character, an authority figure, which none of the rest of us can get away with. I mean, he re really does look like a straight man who can be funny at the same time. You know, he does a merchant banker, he looks like a merchant banker, and yet he's able to kind of send them up very well, which I, I think that's the yeah, area. I think, I, think it's really, I think it's really better for us to ask you that, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah. did you think... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the previous series, I think, were better than the last one. Yeah. Because they had John Cleese in. Yeah, I, th I think it's a general. Last <laughs> 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 time I'm on London Bridge, I always say, what can't get any nasty questions? <laughs> no, Another question? Yes. Um, when do you write your scripts? You know, do you just get the ideas and write it down, or do you sort of say, right, I'm going to write down scripts and sort of sit down and do it? No, I think I think you start off. With, I mean with a completely blank sheet of paper and a blank mind, and you sit there at about 10.30 in the morning, or 11, or half past 11, <laughs> whenever you've had your coffee, and you sit and you just try and um, think of any kind of lunacy that will fill your mind. I mean, we never go for a specific target on Python. We've always written, you know, just, just anything that comes out and then read it to each other and see whether it works or not. But we never go for a specific target or set ourselves an aim when we're writing. I agree. Mm -hmm. He totally agrees. You Somebody over there. Anything, me. sort of anything that sounds completely. Um, I go for anything. Yeah, I mean you're so <laughs> thankful <laughs> when you get a funny idea. Do you do you yeah. write it down and put in your scripts? I think so. Yeah, I think you're so thankful when you find a funny idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to waste it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean that's it really. I mean, we, we all worked on shows before Python, which had a very uh, a definite form, beginning, middle, end, and you always had to end a sketch on a, on a punchline. Whereas we found that this very often was a restriction, you know, and you had half a good idea, and yet you had to put in a weak punchline. Yeah. So we, we scrapped the punchline, just used half the idea, and then went on to another half an idea. But were you asking really about sort of are there any topics or any uh, subjects that you wouldn't uh, touch? Is that what you really meant? No, I just said if you think <laughs> about anything that you think is funny or good idea, yeah, you just I mean, put it down. Yeah, try not to have any constraints. Yeah. yeah, I mean that the running together comes afterwards. I mean, what happens usually is we. We go off and write things sort of individually or in pairs. Like Mike and I usually write together, and uh, John and Graham usually write together, and, and then Eric writes. And um, we just write ideas down. Then we get together, read out all the ideas, decide which ones we're going to use, and then slot them into shows. And then we try and link them. But then yeah. that comes after you've got the ideas. Really. Yeah. Right, someone what kind of audience do you try to appeal to? There's a, there's a leading yeah. question. It's Saturday yeah, morning. Uh, yes, it is, really. Uh, oh. I think really we're trying not to, not to appeal to an, any audience, and, I mean, any particular audience. But basically, we're trying to you know, please ourselves. And 
um, once we, we've sort of read out to, to the group, to the six of us, mm. and if we think it's funny, well, that's mm. about the only criteria we take. I think, really. again, this is a dangerous area which television and the people in control of television tend to be rather keen on, is isolating groups and saying, now you can, after nine o'clock, you can talk to people over 27, you know, from eight to nine, you can talk to people from... Uh, 17 to 27, and before that, it's only imbeciles and children. And I think, you know, it's, it's really kind of wrong that. And with Python, yeah. we just we wrote this, we wrote the shows, and gradually they got earlier because we found out that, uh, you know, and the BBC found out that kids were were enjoying it, you know, as, as much as adults. Yeah. What do you think of the goodies? <laughs> what? <laughs> what a difficult question. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I, I'll tell you what I think of the goodies actually. Oh, he's I think they, I think they trivialise things. I think they take apparently serious subjects. I mean, I think they do very funny jokes, but I think they take apparently serious subjects and they trivialise them. And I think that's very bad. That's very bad actually. Well, on that controversial note, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Payne and Terry Jones, thank you very much. And if you want to see more of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, remember it's on release as from next Thursday in and around London. And the final reminder about writing in for our information leaflets, do send a stamped addressed envelope. That's it for this morning. Have a happy Easter. See you next week.